last night at four o'clock, we had two masses happening at the same time. By 3.30, the church was full, the social hall was full, and anybody arriving at 3.31 needed to go over to the school for the mass that was being held there. I don't even know what the parking lot looked like. I don't even know where everybody parked. The four o'clock mass here in church, I invited the children to come forward and they were sitting here, the ones from the church, the ones from the social hall, they were a number of, of children here. And I asked them, if you could have one gift this Christmas, if you could have one gift this Christmas, what gift would you want it to be? Now, I expected it to be a bunch of toys I had never heard of, <laughs> a bunch of things I just like, oh, sure, whatever. Uh, and there were a few of those, but some of the children surprised me. I want my mother to be happy. I want my grandmother to be in heaven. I want my family to get along with each other. And you stop and you think, well. And then I moved on and there was one little girl sitting over here who kept her hand up and she never put it down. <laughs> she didn't care that I had moved on. She was keeping her hand up. So I'm watching out of the corner of my eye. And I had a bag, and I have a bag here, and it's got stuff in it. And I said, you know, people don't know what to get priests for Christmas, so they get us socks. <laughs> I got a bag full of Christmas socks sitting there. So I showed them all my Christmas socks that I had gotten over the time. And I guess I have a sock fetish. I probably have 50, 75, 100 pairs of socks. I don't know. And I don't know which ones to get rid of, because you just never know when you might want to wear that pair of socks <laughs> again. So we get different gifts. We have different things that we think will make us happy. And then I said to the children, OK, I'm hoping you'll give me the right answer. What is the gift we celebrate tonight? What is the gift we celebrate today? What is the gift that comes to us every day? And luckily, like the second kid said, it's okay. The second kid said, Jesus. And I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you, yes, Jesus. And then I talked about how Jesus wants to be a part of our life and Jesus is the most important thing. And having Jesus in our heart every day is greater than any gift we could get, and this little girl still has her hand up. <laughs> so finally, I call in her. Now, I had used a microphone so I could hear them a little better. I didn't have the mic anymore, and I have no idea what she said. So I kind of tried to remember, figure it out, and she, no, that's not right. And then I, so I kind of moved on, and she put her hand down. I'm like, okay. But then there was a boy sitting in the middle, and all of a sudden, his hand goes up. And it was as if he hadn't heard a thing I said about Jesus. He goes, a gumball machine. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so luckily my mind was working quick enough and I said, if you had a thousand gumballs and you could choose between the thousand gumballs and Jesus, which one would you choose? And then I said, please give me the right answer. And immediately he yelled out, Jesus! And I said, yes, they would applaud. And I said, it's great. My friends, we have Jesus every day. But so many times we go looking at the thousand gumballs and thinking they're going to make us happy. There's so many things in our world that said, I'm going to make you happy. You don't need that God in your life. You don't need Jesus. Celebrate the holidays, enjoy yourself, give gifts, but you don't need Jesus. It's all these other things that will make you happy. I've got a thousand gumballs. You know what can happen with those? You can have so much fun. My friends, we're here today.
Because there's something that tells us that this is important. There's something that tells us that Jesus is the greatest gift we could ever have. Greater than anything else. But so many times, we begin to go through each day, and we forget about that. We forget that Jesus wants to dwell within us. We forget that he wants to be our strength. We forget that he wants to bring us hope. And we start looking to all these other things to make us happy. Our prayer today is that somehow we will see that Jesus is the greatest gift we will ever receive. That God, choosing to come into our world as a human being, is the greatest gift we will ever receive. Jesus coming here as man so that we can see that it's not only about here, it's about eternal life. And every day, every day we can choose whether we're going to allow him to be born again inside of us, whether we're going to allow him to guide us, whether we're going to allow him to be our strength, or we're going to go look for the gumballs. If we let the Lord dwell within us and guide us all the time, it doesn't mean difficult things aren't going to happen. They're going to happen. It means when difficult things happen, we're able to continue to move forward because we know we're not alone. First reading said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Unfortunately, we walk in darkness a lot. There's a lot of darkness out there. There's a lot of things that are trying to pull us down. A lot of things that are trying to keep us from thinking that this world is a great place. A lot of things that are keeping us from having hope. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants to be the light. And every day we can turn on his light. Every day that light's there. We can walk out of here this morning and say, well, that was nice, and then never turn the light on again. Or turn his light on from time to time. My friends, in those moments of darkness, that light is there. And in those moments of joy, that light is there as well. When everything's wonderful, then we forget about that light sometimes. Because everything's wonderful. When things are dark, that's when it gets a little more difficult. And in those dark moments, we can choose to allow the Lord to be the light. The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires. The problem is we don't always want to reject worldly desires. Those gumballs look good. They're going to make us happy. If I allow the Lord Jesus Christ to truly dwell within me, then it's harder to reach out for other things because God's there. But in the end, in the long run, what's truly going to make us happy? The angel said to Mary, be not afraid. The angel said to the shepherds, be not afraid. And God says to each and every one of us today, be not afraid. My light is with you. You are not alone. So if we could have one gift, what gift would that be? We can come up with a lot of different things. But in the end, what we celebrate today is the greatest gift of all. The gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gift of God dwelling within us. The gift of God who wants to be our light. Especially in those times of darkness. The choice is ours. May we choose the Lord. May we recognize that in the end, he's the one who's going to guide us and give us the strength we need. And may we truly be thankful that we are not alone. May we truly be thankful that we have a God that loves us so much that he came into this world to guide us and lead us one day to the greatest gift of all, the gift of eternal life.